I'm Coyote Peterson, and it's always been my belief that the future of conservation begins with the next generation of animal enthusiasts. That's why in each episode, I'll be taking kids just like you on the adventure of a lifetime. We'll be going to some of the coolest locations where we will explore unique habitats and go behind the scenes of wildlife sanctuaries to get up close and personal with some of our planet's most incredible species. Together, we'll brave the elements, embrace the wild, and witness the unforgettable. So lace up your hiking boots and buckle your backpack because we're about to embark on a wild field trip. South Bass Island is located off Lake Erie's southern shore. And as the third largest island in the lake, it spans 3.7 miles long by 1.5 miles wide, encompassing just over 1,500 acres. The island is beautiful. Okay, so the ferry has just landed. And any minute now, Sydney is going to be pulling up. We're going to be introducing her to the ecosystem that exists here on the islands. It's very diverse and very unique. We're gonna be working with a couple of experts here in the area to take a look at an invasive species known as the round goby and then the Lake Erie water snake. This is the only place in the world that Lake Erie water snakes exist on the Erie Islands. So Sydney is gonna get the chance to help with some important research and get hands on with these really cool reptiles. Joining me on today's wild field trip is Sydney Hendrickson. I was introduced to her glowing personality after watching a few of her homemade animal adventure videos, where she takes on the moniker Safari Sydney. I think her love for nature and wild animals is pretty evident early on. You know, you could just tell that there was not a mean, harmful bone in her body. We feel like Sydney's curiosity and her bravery is just really going to inspire other girls to get outside and explore nature. Sydney is a beacon of positivity, and her curiosity for the natural world makes her the perfect co-host for today's adventure. Hi! Hi! You must be Sydney. I am Sydney. I'm Coyote. Nice to meet you. This is Peter. That's Peter? Yeah. Is he also a coyote? Yeah. Cool. Is you he... can have him. He's for me? Yes. Can he come on the adventure with us today? Of course he can. This is going to be awesome. Now, I see you've got on an extra cute outfit, Thank but we're you. gonna get you into some adventure gear and we're gonna head off on a wild field trip. Are you ready Ooh, for that? Yes. Let's go see if we can find some really cool creatures. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Like many islands, South Bass is filled with mythology. And we will be following the tale of an ongoing battle between the heroes and villains that protect or pillage the waters surrounding this lake locked landmass. First, I want Sydney to meet our story's villain, an invasive species that is notorious for wreaking havoc on the native fish populations by robbing their nests and consuming their eggs. To better understand this invader, we are going to get hands-on with a few that have been extracted from the lake for research purposes. Sydney, let me introduce you to the round goby. Look at these fish. They look cute and alienish at the same time. They really do. They have those big buggy eyes. Now, the round goby is technically an invasive species here in the Great Lakes. These came over here from Eurasia on ships. They got into the bilge area. When the ships got here, they spilled out their water, and these fish came with the boats. Now, the problem is that they've established a stronghold, which means they are here to stay. These gobies are notorious for robbing fish nests of their eggs. And if there's no fish eggs, what are we not going to have? Baby fish. And if there's no baby fish, what are we also not going to have? Grown-up fish. Absolutely right. So the gobies are eating fish eggs and depleting the natural fish that exist here in the environment. However, this is one unique instance where an invasive species has actually had a positive effect because they accidentally are causing a food source for our hero of the day, the Lake Erie water snake. And did you know that Lake Erie water snakes, 90% of their diet consists of eating gobies? Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of gobies. So the water snakes are helping to balance out the invasive population of gobies by eating them every single day. And the snakes can eat multiple gobies 
in a single day. So here's a question I have. Do you think you were brave enough to hold a goby? Yes. You do, I like that confidence. So if you put your hands out here, over this little container, and we're gonna place it right down in your hands. Now they don't bite and they don't sting, which is a good thing for me and it's gonna be totally safe for you. Are you ready? Yes, okay. I'm ready. Here we go, King Gobi is coming in. Whoa, he's a fast one. Hold on a second, he doesn't necessarily wanna be a part of the scene, but that's okay, I've got him under control. Do you wanna name this big Gobi? Gobi. Gobi, big Gobi's name is Gobi. And keep your hands flat right there. And that is you. <laughs> holding a very big goby. There we go, look at that. Now you see those big fins? Yeah. They will lay those flat on the basin of the lake and actually use it to push themselves forwards. And look at all the speckling on the body. What do you think that speckling does? Camouflage. Camouflage, yes, that's very good, absolutely right. These fish are incredibly good at camouflaging, but you know who can find them underwater? Water snakes. That's right, the water snakes can find them underwater. And this is what I would consider a very good sized goby. If you were a water snake and you came across this goby, it would be a very good meal. Here, have a breather. Yeah, there we go. We'll get them down in the water for a second. See that? Look at those big buggy eyes. They have incredible eyesight both at night and during the day, and they hunt both at night and during the day. They're pretty much eating machines, so you can see why if there are millions of them out in the lake, it could be so detrimental to native fish species because they just eat and eat and eat. So the snakes are helping to control the population of the outbreak of gobies. So now that we've taken a look at what we consider the villain in the story, are you ready to go out and look for the hero? Yes. Okay, well we're gonna meet up with my friend Kristen. She is a snake expert and she's gonna Come send on. us, in you go, Gobi. She's going to send us on a mission to search for Lake Erie water snakes. Wow. Do you think you're ready for that? I think I'm ready. Okay, well let's leave the gobies behind and find ourselves some snakes. When it comes to our story's hero, the Lake Erie water snake, the island has a go-to expert, Kristen Stanford. For more than two decades, she has been researching, recording, and promoting the rebound of this once endangered reptile species. Her directive for the next part of our mission is an experience I am certain Sydney will never forget. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Coyote. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. Let me introduce you to my young adventurer, Sydney. Hi. Sydney? It's so good to meet you. So good to meet you too. Now, Kristen, as I understand it, you've got a big mission for us today. I do. I have a very important mission for you guys. I need you to go out to this shoreline and to catch as many snakes as you can today. Big snakes, little snakes, medium snakes, any kind of snake you see. Okay, I think we can do that. I love catching snakes. Sydney loves snakes. Uh, and when we catch these snakes, do you want me to just put them in my backpack? How do you... I have just the thing. I have a very special pillowcase for you. Aww. And I have a very special pillowcase for you. Ooh, stripes. And some extras, because you guys are gonna catch so many snakes today, you're gonna need some extras. Now, once we've got snakes in the pillowcase, what would you like us to do with them? I would like you to bring all of those snakes right back here, and then we'll go over how we take some biometric data on all of the snakes that you were able to catch today. Okay, I think we can do that. Sydney, are you ready to go out and catch some yeah. water snakes? All right, let's go. Good luck. Since the habitation of this island, Lake Erie water snakes have gotten a bad rap because people have wrongly misidentified them as being a venomous species. But the truth is they are non-venomous and are rather harmless if left alone. Like all snakes, they can bite. So as long as Sydney is wearing her bite-proof gloves, her hands will be well protected against their tiny teeth. We have made it down to the shoreline, and as you can see, water snakes are welcome here. And our goal is to catch as many of these slithering reptiles as we possibly can. Sydney, how many think we're gonna get today? 100. 100 snakes would be fantastic and Kristen would be thrilled. I'll be happy if we can just get a handful of them in our pillowcases. Now the goal is for me to catch the first snake so that I can show Sydney exactly how to handle these reptiles. From there, I'm turning it over to you and you're gonna catch as many snakes as possible. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go catch some snakes. Check it out. I don't really see anything. No, but that's a great spot to have looked. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh, got 
got a water stick right here. See it, see it, see it. Okay, so Sydney, let me approach first. Hold on a second. Yes, our first water snake of the day, and it is a big one. That is exactly the size I was hoping that we would come across. So Sydney, what I'm gonna do is safely catch the snake first so that I can show you how to properly handle one of these snakes. Now watch, you see how its head's kind of curled back like that? Yeah. It is definitely in a defensive pose at the moment. And being in the shade like this, it's gonna be a little slower. Wow, this is a really well-behaved snake at the moment. Look at that. She's just staying completely calm in my hand. So don't get too, too close. Crouch down right there. That is the Lake Erie water snake, the hero in our storyline. Now, can you remember what percentage of the Lake Erie water snake's diet is gobies? 90. That's right. They can spring into action with incredible quickness. And you see that positioning that the snake has with its head curled back in an S shape like that? pretty much means that it is ready to strike. Let me test and see if that's gonna happen. Okay, the snake is staying pretty calm. Now, ow, see that? Got bit right on the thumb. That's what I don't want to happen to you, which is why you have gloves. Now, I wanna teach you how to properly hold a water snake. So sit up on your knees like this. I'm gonna keep control of the snake's head. Put your gloves out and just kind of gently hold onto the snake's body like that. Okay. I think it's ready to strike again. Yep, maybe. keep her out in front of you like that. That is perfect. That is you holding the Lake Erie water snake. Okay. I think she feels famous. She is definitely famous right now, that's for sure. And can you see how big and robust her body is? There's a good chance that this is a snake that's going to have babies really soon. And Kristen will be really excited that we have found a female. But this is a great first catch. Let's get the snake into the pillowcase. Can you open up your pillowcase for me? I know what we should name her. What? But it has to start with an S because she's a snake. What do you want to name her? Celestia? Celestia with an S. I like it. Okay, open your pillowcase all the way up. Gently get her inside. I think she should be called Queen Celestia. Queen Celestia is in the bag. And my thumb took a little bit of a bite. Mm. Now it's important to note that Lake Erie water snakes are non-venomous, so I'm in no danger right now. And the reason you see so much blood is because they have an anticoagulant in their saliva, which means that the red blood cells don't collect together, they begin to spread out. That's why there's so much bleeding. Now when the snakes bite the gobies, that saliva and the blood actually helps the snake to swallow the fish. But this is a good example of why I need you to be wearing the gloves and why we don't want the snake to get too close to your face, right? Right. Do you want to carry Queen Celestia? Yes. Okay, guys. Well, Sydney thinks we're going to catch 100 snakes. One in the bag, 99 to go. Come on, let's see what else we can find. Maybe 101. Well, we'll see. Oh, I see a snake. Where, where, where? Where? Oh my goodness, right. Yep, right there. Right there. Wow, okay, this is perfect position for you to catch your first water snake. Give me the bag. Now you can see it's already onto us. It's in a defensive position. So let's approach really slowly. Now remember, when you grab onto the snake, you don't want to get it anywhere near your face. So let's come around this side just a little bit. I'm going to be right next to you the whole time. Now you want to try to grab the midsection of the snake and then get close to the head so that it can't bite you. You feel comfortable doing this? I think I am. Okay, you can do this. You Pretty can do this. I'm going to be right here. Go ahead behind the snake. I'll keep its attention right here. There you go. Now, you see it's getting into that defensive pose? Oh, yeah. It might try to strike at you. If it does, just put your hand out. Remember, it can't bite through the glove. Crouch down right there in front of it. Careful, careful, careful. I got it. Oh, there oh, you go. Man. You see that? Can't bite through the glove. Great job. Go ahead and grab by its head. You got it. Yes! First water snake. Great job, Sydney. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh, okay, careful. Hold on to it. Oh, oh, oh. Get, oh, it, get control it. of it. There okay. you go. Don't okay. get it too close to your face. Okay. How does that feel? You have caught your first big Lake Erie water snake. I'll call her Sweetie. Sweetie? Okay. Well, before anything crazy happens, let's get her into the pillowcase. Tail first. And she's not that sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. High fives. How about that? Her first official water snake catch. That wasn't too tough, was it? Wasn't too tough. Yeah, and do you feel confident catching more snakes? Yes. Our snake search continues. Dude, that was awesome. Okay, I'm gonna tie this wow, bag that up. That was awesome. Do you want me to carry Sweetie or do you want to carry Sweetie? Uh, I 
I'll carry both. Okay, you carry both. That sounds good. All right, let's keep let's searching for snakes. You be the snake carrier. Please. I'll be the yeah. snake spotter. Okay, down the beach we go. Oh, I think I see it. Oh, there's it's right there. from a tree. Yeah, yeah, this one's good for you. This one's good for you. Here, give me the bags. Okay, yeah. approach it real slow. Oh, go ahead and grab it, grab it, grab it. No, 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 no. no. Get him, get him, oh. get him. You get him. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Here, you take these snakes. <laughs> Good try. When they get down into the water, Woo! we'll let Coyote nab them when they get down into the water. Careful on the rocks. I'm good. Ooh, this one is definitely bitey. Oh, 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 I see a snake I right see. here, right here on the rock edge. You oh, see yes. it? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Before you approach the snake, look at the position that it's in. That is total strike pose right there. So approach very slowly. You can do it, you can do it. Looks Keep your hands out in really front of you. Angry. Oh, oh, yes. Get, make the catch. You got it, you got it. Hold on to it, two hands. Don't get it too close to your face. Great job, great job. Yeah. All right, we are going to get Summer safely into the pillowcase. That was Heads and tails. awesome catch. Want to check these rocks here? Oh, baby snake. Baby snake. Baby snake. Check it out. Wow. Yeah. Check it out. That's a baby Lake Erie water snake. You see the pattern? Yeah. Look how bitey he is. Oh, oh we got your glove. That is perfect. We're definitely going to want to hold on to this one so that we can show Kristen. He's so cute. Isn't he cute? Oh, he's so cute. You want to put him in your bag? I'll name him Tiny. Tiny? That's a perfect name. Our bag's bustling with snakes. We return with smiles to Kristen's Field Biometric Station. Hey, Kristen, we're back from our mission. Hey, what did you get for me? We got a couple of snakes, and this is the catch of the day. Really? What's in there? A tiny snake named Tiny. Can't wait to see it. Now, I have no idea how many snakes we actually caught. OK. I lost track at some point. I'm guessing it's That's close okay. to 10. Let's see what you guys got from. So let's check out Tiny first. Isn't he so tiny? Oh, he's a beautiful snake. For every single snake caught, Kristen collects a range of biometric data that catalogs the rebounding population of these native reptiles. Data processing includes a snout to vent measurement, sex determination, and scanning for a previous identification chip that is known as a pit tag. No tag detected. No tag detected, so this is a good catch for us. Oh, he is the catch of the day. If the snake does not have a tag, one is quickly inserted so that it officially becomes a part of Kristen's ongoing research and the island's permanent records. The entire process takes about five minutes per snake and is best compared to visiting your health and wellness doctor once a year. Quick, simple, and totally painless. To be on an island is fantastic, but to appreciate one from the water is an experience all to itself. And there's no better way to admire these land masses than from a catamaran. What was your favorite part of this expedition? I did like holding Tiny the baby water snake. The catch of the trip? Yes. And why do you think that snakes are such an important thing for our planet? Because sometimes they eat the pests that are bothering our houses or our fish population or other ecosystems. So do you love water snakes? I love them. For hundreds of years, humans have enjoyed the Erie Islands, yet just beyond the realm of human awareness, a never-ending battle between heroes and villains plays out daily to balance this aquatic ecosystem. If you would like to learn more or even become a volunteer for the summer where you can help with research projects and get hands-on with some slithering snakes, I encourage you to get involved and become a part of the mythology that is South Bass Island. 
I'm Coyote Peterson. I am Sydney Hendrickson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next Wild Field Trip. <laughs>